Welcome back to the Ing Lit Hit. This is the final instalment of our series in Ozymandias by Percy Bysshe Shelley. Therefore, I will read the poem in full once again. Ozymandias I met a traveller from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal, these words appear, My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty and despair. Nothing beside remains, round the decay of that colossal wreck, Boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. Earlier in this series, I said this of the statue in the desert. It could be said that Ramesses II, or Ozymandias, is stuck, half sunk as he is, absorbed by the millions of grains of sand that envelop him. But I like the image of him floating away, a vague memory caught in an eddy of wind and rushed on, exiled from popular culture in any meaningful sense. It is this ending that really highlights Ozymandias' fate, the sheer desolation in place of a vast empire, the fact that nothing beside remains of this self-professed king of kings, the eternal emptiness of the lone and level sands. This setting is a vacuum into which no human power can possibly penetrate, Nature has had its way. The language of sparsity is clear. Nothing, bare, lone. This boundless or infinite wasteland is Ozymandias' cemetery. His legacy left to rot round the decay. Shelley has made much of the tyrant's former powers, his vast legs and now this colossal wreck, in order for his fall to have a greater impact. Humans crave attention don't they? We desire recognition, reverence and respect. We cherish our reputations. But Shelley crafts a rather bleak image of the extent of that recognition, reverence and respect. Ozymandias, once surrounded by advisers, servants, soldiers, even sculptors, is now completely alone. His statue, once a centred masterpiece in his grand city, designed to intimidate his subjects, is left discarded in the desert. Nothing beside remains. This is the shocking sentence that cuts to the heart of human pride and its inevitable implications. This lacerated line of poetry, the caesura slicing it in half, is a rebuke of absolutist power. But it is not just Ozymandias, the malevolent despot, who will crumble, his empire diminished. It is the sculptor's work of art, the traveller's unreliable story, the speaker's even more unreliable recitation, and, at some point, even Shelley's poem too. This is, after all, in terms of both imperial power and artistic power, an admission of his own ephemerality, the fleetingness of his own work. This is a poem of decay. If you liked this video, please subscribe below.